Bro, what the hell is this? Bonfires on old school RuneScape. This doesn't even seem real. They are a lot less experienced than just like lighting the logs themselves, but like you burn them so quickly. I don't remember bonfires being this quick on uh runescape 3 anyways I, I remember them taking a very long time um so you could kind of like really afk them but this is such a cool thing right you can chop your inventory of logs and then just like afk and burn them all and like actually gain fire making xp so maybe people will actually train fire making now rather than just doing it at winter todd these are regular logs. I'm curious what the experience is going to be. It's probably going to be like very, very low. 14. And here is magic log. Let's check these ones out as well. They are 100 XP each, so not terrible. Also, another really cool part about these bonfires is you can actually rest at them now. I do have a lot of run energy, but basically you would rest at these bonfires and you would sit down like in pre-EOC, if you guys remember, and you can just sit and your character like drink some tea or whatever and your run will actually go up quite a bit faster. So I'm assuming you'll see a bunch of these like forest campfires throughout the world and you can just rest at them. That's so cool. And it's a community thing too. It's not like random NPCs. So today, Old School RuneScape got Forestry Part 2, so we're going to go over this today and cover everything it has to offer. It's time to don your most rugged plaid shirt and sharpen your axe because Forestry Part 2 is here. In this update to the woodcutting expansion released earlier this year, you can expect new rewards, new gear, and a cozy new way to train fire making. Let's get into it. New events, so events are existing activities that spawn while players are chopping a tree. Each event has its own mini objective to complete and you'll receive experience in anima infused bark, although some events have special goodies on offer too. Note that some events will only spawn when someone within the chopping group has a certain item in their forestry kit. The main components for each item are available in the forestry shop, along with a list of everything else you'll need to craft them. It's well worth doing so because every time you contribute an item towards an event, you receive the full reward upon completion. Here's a list of the new events to look out for. We'll take a quick look at this. So there is the friendly ant, um, there is beehive, the pheasant control, um, poachers, um, enhanced ritual, and the leprechaun rework. And then it goes over each of the events in like more detail and then you can actually kind of see exactly how you would do each event. So I'm going to take a few minutes and read this myself, but that is pretty cool. I definitely like that there's more of these like events to do. We'll make woodcutting a little more interesting. Alright, so there is new rewards. Today's update also adds a selection of new rewards. So this is the forestry shop items. Looks like there is a ton in here. I haven't even started forestry on any of my accounts yet. I was waiting for the batch two to come out to actually just fully jump into it. So let's take a look at some of these. You got the forestry kit. I don't even know which one what which one of these are new or whatever, but I know there's this sawmill voucher, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, I'm sure it'll go over all of the new ones. So these useful components are available from the forestry shop and can help you craft items for attracting events. Seems a little bit like uh, necromancy for attracting events there. But anyways, let's go over this. So there is smoke fuel, um, egg cushion, the trap disar disarmer blueprint, uh, and then the crystal charm. Um, and then it will show the different cost of them, the skill requirements and other components I guess you need for them. Oh, this one is awesome. The two-handed axe will cost 10,000 uh, infused anima bark and 500 oak logs noted. That's a very weird requirement there. But anyways, these are the two-handed axes. I think they look very, very cool. I, I should go ahead and get myself the dragon one just for the hell of it because it looks so cool. And let's go over this. Well, let's start with the big one, the two-handed axe. Pick up the felling uh, axe handle from the forestry store and you can use it while next to an anvil to change almost any axe into a powerful two-handed variant bronze iron steel black mithril adamant rune dragon crystal and third age axes are eligible 
And while the process is irreversible, both the felling axe handle and the two-handed axes are tradable on the Grand Exchange. While it chops at the same speed as a regular axe, the two-handed versions offer some ex something extra. While you have the Forester's rations in your Forestry kit, each successful chop will give you a 10% more XP and a 20% chance uh, not to obtain a log. The rations are automatically consumed. If you're out of rations, the axe will function like any other, so make sure you stock up. So basically the, ra the rations will give you more experience but not give you the log, but that's fine because most people aren't in it for the log. Um, now that rations are hot, are a hot commodity, uh, we've also improved the recipe. As of today's update, higher tier leaves will give you extra rations and combining it with fish will also increase the number of rations you obtain. Um, here's the base level for each leaf type. So normal leaves is two, oak leaves is four, willow leaves is six, maple leaves is eight, yew leaves are 10, and magic leaves are 12. In addition, using different tiers of fish will multiply the base number, so I think I went over this in another video, but from levels 1 to 33, it will times 1 your rations. Um, for fish level 34 to 69, it will double your rations, and then fish from 70 to 99 will triple them. Um, so if you're cooking up rations from oak leaves and a cooked herring you'll create four rations but if you're using magic leaves and a cooked sharks you'll get a whopping 36 each time the sawmill voucher costs 150 anima infused bark and this will give you 10 vouchers this stackable and tradable uh, little ticket will let will let you receive two planks for every log used at the sawmill what a deal vouchers are only consumed if you have the space for the plank so there's no chance of spending all the vouchers just to drop a bunch of resources to the floor good job with the coding there jagex the vouchers also work with the make making plank spell okay that's interesting that's really cool i'm glad they thought about that that's actually personally the method i use to make all the planks on my iron man okay next we got the twitchers gloves uh costs 250 anima infused bark plus 25 willow logs noted and this will give you 250 charges um these bird nerd hand warmers are perfect for nest hunters and will come fully charged from the forestry's shop or the forestry shop with these gloves equipped you'll have a 10 percent increased chance to receive any one type of bird's nests including ring egg seed and clue i'm pretty sure everyone in here will probably go for the clue ones am i right Every time you receive a log, a charge will be consumed. Note that the effect only applies while woodcutting. I would I would hope so. Next, we have the cape pouch, which will cost 2,500 anima-infused bark plus 25 willow logs. Noted. If you've already put in the work and received and reach 99 woodcutting, this reward is for you. Use it on the forestry kit and you'll gain the ability to store your cape inside it and the benefit from it. 10% increased bird's nest chance. You must have the forestry kit equipped to enable this effect. Okay. Forester's campfires. This is the one that I was showing at the very start of the video. I like how they're calling it campfires and not bonfires now for the main event campfires outside of battling the fearsome winter todd the norm for fire making training involves a lot of clicking on the floor to fit with the chill vibes of forestry we're including something a little less click intensive as of today's update, you'll be able to create campfires, which will let you add and burn logs one at a time for a third of the usual experience. I was thinking it was half, but anyways, you'll gain roughly 50% less experience per hour, but at least uh, we'll finally discover what's on the floor of the Grand Exchange. <laughs> True. And you can uh, give your poor mouse a rest for a while. Campfires deplete over time, so be sure to keep them stocked up with steady supply of fresh logs. Now, I'm wondering, I don't know if it's going to say this, but say you just light one thing right beside a bank um, and you continuously add logs to it for the whole hour. Is that all you need to do or do you eventually have to light another fire? I'm going to have to take a, a little bit and figure this out. 
smaller tweaks and changes. Lastly, we have a selection of quality of life changes to existing forestry content. We've added the following items to the collection log. So the woodcutter's cape, pouch, the twitcher's gloves, the felling axe handle, the pheasant outfit, the fox whistle, and the golden pheasant egg. All versions of the forestry kit, log basket, and forestry basket can now be stored in the player-owned house. All leaves are now stackable. Mulch, mulch now has a different inventory icon, which change depending on how much mulch you have. Um, the struggling sapling event now gives farming XP based on the farming level and potency of the mulch. And lastly, we've added a feature which lets you withdraw logs from your log basket and forestry basket straight into your inventory. To do so, simply check your basket if you prefer. You can still have the basket on the bank booth to empty them into your inventory or use them while in the bank interface to empty them there. We've also seen a lot of comments uh, suggesting that players should be able to deposit directly into the bank while ge uh, gear like this is still equipped. Uh, we're still discussing the feasibility of such a change, but we hope to have an update for you in the future. And that's all for Forestry Part 2. Make your way to a for uh, forestry world and get chopping. In the meanwhile, though, um, there is a, se a second minor update. Huh, classic little Jagex pun there. Shooting stars. Okay, so I guess they changed a little bit about shooting stars. So today's update also launches a slew of changes to shooting stars as outlined in our previous news post. First up, stars will now only spawn between tier 6 and tier 9. That is freaking awesome, which reduces the total time of each wave from 128 minutes to 90 minutes. Here's the chance of encountering each tier. So tier 6, 25, tier 7, 30. Okay, interesting. That is cool. Um, in addition to make star degradation rates consistent regardless of the size, uh, each tier now lasts 7 minutes before degrading, assuming there's at least one player mining the star. This means that a tier 9 star will last 63 minutes, down from the current uh, time of 86 minutes. Um, each tier will now also give a consistent 32 experience when obtaining stardust, in addition to your chances of obtaining stardust at the same at, at all now. Scale with your mining level, that's interesting, from 29% uh, at level 1 to 46% at level 99. Finally, we have a few small changes. Clue scrolls are now, again, obtainable from mining stars. Uh, stars and Priftinus no longer give crystal shards. Why? Come on, Jagex. That doesn't even make sense. That's really a bad update right there. And random events and cannons will now uh, be disabled in areas around stars. Uh, okay. <laughs> Lastly, please note that stars uh, will begin landing 20 to 50 minutes after the game world's reboot, and then roughly every 90 minutes after that. Um, and I guess then they go over a merge update. Uh, the official cookbook announced. Jesus Christ. Damn, this actually looks pretty funny. It's like starters, soups, and stews. Like you can actually buy a cookbook and make the regular or the runescape recipes what the hell what the hell is this smite runescape returns out now calling all smite loving scapers general gardor and the sandwich lady will have arrived on the battlefield to face off against the gods of smite a year ago runescape and smite united for an awesome crossover i think my friend actually told me about that that's really funny um, which saw a gnome child, the king black dragon, and the wise old man make their smite debuts. Um, that's very fucking interesting. Um, we're delighted to say that we're back in the sm in smite by popular demand. Sandwich lady and general guard are. Huh. I can't wait till my friends tell me about this. Well, overall awesome update by jagex once again they're just crushing it this year with so many good updates and i'm just so glad i can cover all these updates and honestly just take part in them as well it's so cool to have a different way of fire making right you don't want to be click intensive there's really no afk way to train fire making right because winter todd you gotta click as well still so now I can train fire making on my alt while playing my Iron Man. You love to see that, man. And it's just super chill. And you can do it while 
wood cutting which is just another thing also all the rewards from forestry look amazing i can't wait to check that out one day but yeah another solid update by jagex thank you guys so much for watching the video and i will catch you in the next one see ya later